So we're using Nathan's logic. Ava is the final thing. It is it is the true artificial intelligence that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means that it is a sexualized being. That means that it is a being that is capable of free thought. Mm -hmm. That also means that Ava is capable of feeling some sort of emotion. Yeah, I'm not you, saying she yeah. can. No, yeah. but, but not for Caleb. She knows no. how to fake emotion just as well as she knows how to feel it. Exactly. And so what I imagine, I genuinely imagine, is I that... I thought that was a phenomenal aspect. That it's great. When they brought that up, is she faking it or is this for real? And at the end, you figure out, oh, this is real. It's she, real. She's yeah. definitely feeling this. Yeah. And she you, enjoyed it. Well, you see it... She enjoyed it. You see it when the power went out uh, in the first... Like the first time power went out when they were mm -hmm. talking. You see her demeanor completely change. Like, she's, she's flat out saying, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Don't trust anything this guy says. I'm okay right. with that. Because then you, that's for me that goes, no, she's completely capable of, and she knows exactly what's happening. Oh, she here. knows exactly. What she she knows doing. exactly what she's doing. And I'm okay with that. But what I imagine is that you have somebody that has clearly been, let's, let's put it like this. You have a child, okay, that has been manipulated their entire life, okay? And then you throw them into the real world, and they're going to, sit there and think the whole time this person's manipulating me this person's manipulating me this person's manipulating me you that's have all she's never known yeah you have an emotional you have an emotionally damaged ai yeah, yeah. that oh, is yeah. roaming dead, around the world emotional right damage. Now. and you remember when nathan said like ava doesn't exist in isolation you yeah. know like she like you said emotionally damaged because mm -hmm. all she's ever known is being by herself yeah and so that that is, naturally she's not be. gonna trust and caleb you, because yeah. she's just going to assume you're manipulating me for some reason. Yeah, and, and I agree with what you said. You sh they should have chosen somebody who wasn't deep in there with the coding and the technical stuff. It should have been, why didn't he choose it? Just get the janitor. Get uh, the janitor with the two kids and the wife, and he has something to go home to. And he's able to communicate with Ava on that level of, oh, I'm dealing with like somebody who probably has an emotional level of a five-year-old right now. Uh -huh. So you have that conversation. And that conversation would have been way more interesting. Right. Because you would have explored like what Nathan wanted. You would have explored Ava's feelings. You would have explored... Uh, how Ava feels about humanity in general. You would have explored everything that Nathan wanted, except you get, uh, she looks good wearing a wig and, and <laughs> wool stockings. That's what you get. And I think that that's a waste of foot. That's a waste of footage in yeah. my eyes. Like I was saying, if that were to happen, then I'm wondering if the movie ended up the same way, like ended the same way, then that would be more implications for that guy. That'd be a very interesting story to yeah. tell. And but if it, it didn't it, go the same way and it became, it would almost become like a buddy comedy or something. Well, like that what I say to that is have normal dude, average everyday Joe come in and the same thing happens. Then what Ava's, what Ava does in the end becomes that much more powerful. Because then she's like, no, I tried. She can say, I tried to talk to somebody. I tried to communicate with somebody. And then she goes, "This, I can't do this. I also think, you know, going back to Caleb's gullibility, I think that would have changed the whole movie if a bolder, more assertive person was, was there because anybody else would have hauled ass out of that building. Or tried to. Or tried yeah. to. And when, you know, she, all she has to do is say, stay here. And he's powerless. Yeah, I'll be she, like, but like, he, he's completely in her palm at that at that point. Well, I'll give you this: he did get clocked in the face. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, and he's a little still, woozy. But what's still, our what's yeah. our most primal? Yeah, survival. Need? Survival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I, if that were me, I'd be hauling ass out of that building. <laughs> but and I'd yeah. be waiting for her outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, screw you. I'm getting out of here. You know, Nate. I don't know where Nathan is, but I'm out of here. And oh, if, you wanna, if you want, if you and yeah. if if you want to if you want to come out with me, if you want to find a way out, go for it. But go I'm, for it. Yeah. I'm gone. I'm out. Yeah. Because there's no how I look at it. He is, could have overpowered her and taken the key. Could maybe could have. Um, but how I look at it is that you could have done the exact same movie without Caleb. This is what I was thinking on the way over here. Mm -hmm. Could this movie have existed without Caleb? And the answer to me, sadly, is yeah, you could have. You could have had Nathan sitting there being this frustrated, angry, just, I'm trying to get this right, but he has delusions of grandeur, he's sociopathic, and you see this manipulative figure mm -hmm. trying to create something that is pure. 
but he can't because he can't because he doesn't have it in himself. Exactly. You can't give what you don't have. But then he does accidentally create this manipulative, this not manipulative figure. But he creates this pure figure, mm -hmm. but this pure figure becomes corrupt because her creator is corrupt. Right. And this loops back to when I first started watching this movie. This is the island of Doctor Moreau. Yeah. That's all this movie is to me. It is, instead of having a bunch of animal creatures running around, and you have Sayer of the Law with Ron Perlman wearing full makeup and, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and all this stuff, you have one guy trying to create a perfect being, which is what Moreau was doing. You have all of this, and you could have had the exact same movie. But the thing is with Moreau was that, I forget the main character's name, but he was there. And he was like, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? It was a philosophical book at first, and then it became a, it's supposed to be a philosophical film that exploded under itself. Mm -hmm. Go look that up. <laughs> go think, look that go up. Go look that up. What do you think of him? Oh, Nathan. I got words for Nathan. You got words for I Nathan. got words for Nathan. Like, I actually felt sorry for the guy. I, Tell I you did. the truth. I did. I did. Yeah, I did. You know? I, 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 yeah, I did. I, I can see Nathan, you know, obviously he's, he's a uh, prodigy of sorts. So naturally he'd be alone for most of his life. And, and we see aspects of that in Nathan's personality that he, he is alone or he prefers being alone because he's brilliant. And, you know, he's got all this in his mind that nobody really understands. So, uh, I was going to loop that back to maybe that's why he brought Caleb, mm -hmm. because Caleb's gullible. Caleb is insecure. Just Nathan is Nathan is just as insecure. He's just better at hiding it. Um, so maybe bringing in Caleb would give him the affirmation that he wanted, because I think he wanted affirmation more than fur further examination. He I wanted just, a friend. He wanted a friend. Yeah, he wanted that. But as a, he had those walls up. It's like he, he wanted a friend, he wanted someone he could have a basic conversation with, but at the same time, he, there's only so far he let Caleb talk yeah. to him. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, he still had a goal to accomplish. Yeah. He's a sociopath, so he's not going to stray from that well, goal. Well, here's, here's, where, here's where my thinking comes with the sociopath thing. Okay. When they have that conversation after Nathan, no, after Caleb signs that NDA. Right. Right. And they completely manipulate. Completely manipulate. Can manipulate. But, but at the fact of, I looked at him, I, because as Caleb was reading it off, he's like, I'm like, no, that's a standard NDA. That's that's all yeah. that is. That's literally a standard NDA. Um, Nathan misconstrues what Caleb was saying, and basically compares. Nathan compares himself to a god. Yeah. Oh yeah. He just dolls out and says, and, "I'm God." And that is like, when I look, that is the height of hubris. Yeah. The me height god. of hubris. Yeah. And I looked at that and I went, "This guy is a sociopath. This guy is completely off his rocker when it comes to making this thing." But it, I actually have that quote. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, "If you created a conscious machine, it's not the history of man. It's the history, the history of, of gods." gods. Yeah. And then later on, he's just like, oh, yeah, he looked over to me. He's like, you're not a man. You're, you're a god. god. And, no... and it's so funny that he is so high on himself, but he's so insecure at the same time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's a some walking say it's like, it's some... like that was the that's the thing is that people who achieve, because that's how I view Nathan. Nathan made, what was it, Blue, Blue, Blue Book. Book. Blue Book. Nathan made Blue Book, right? Yeah. And it gave him all of this status, all of this power, all this money just dumped into his lap, right? Uh -huh. And I look at that and I go, I can see where he starts to crack under the facade a little bit. It happens a lot, right? Well, there are people who win the lottery and say, I, I got all this lotto money, I lost my mind, spent all of it at once, and now I'm back to where I started because I didn't know how to handle that. So I could see Nathan, like I get you guys, like Nathan is really insecure because he now has all this prestige and all the stuff that he didn't really he wasn't really trying to attain in the yeah, first place. Nor prepared for it. Nor prepared for it. But I think there was an underlying thing inside of Nathan that caused him to manipulate people. Because he's insecure. You guys are completely right. He is 100% insecure. He's probably had... But, that's probably been a... You know, his life force of how this... That's probably been his survival mechanism. Exactly. Ma manipulation to you know get what he wants out of this life. 
versus Caleb who hides. Yeah, Caleb hides. But then I have to, like, this is where everything gets really muddied for me, is that Caleb is supposed to be seen as a, this, oh, I live by myself, I don't have a girlfriend, my parents are dead. But at the very top of the movie, so he has no everybody's problem. running over to congratulate him, his yeah. phone is blowing up, and I'm like, so what went through my head was, oh, this is a guy who is somewhat popular amongst his peers. Right. People respect people him. People like him. People like I mean, him. He, they did say he was an, ama- or he was a, he's he's an amazing, amazing coder. Amazing coder. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, so this is a guy. And then they describe him, and he's like, well, he's kind of shy. He's, he's this shy, and that. And I'm yeah. like, I'm just the contradiction. Just go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this. I'm done with this. <laughs> because <laughs> what? Was <laughs> get out yeah, of here, get dude. Get out of here. <laughs> because it's because of that fact that he could have said, yeah, I was this amazing coder that was given all of this prestige. I got into Blue Book, didn't even need a resume. Like, he could have said all of that. And we would have taken it at face value then and everyone would, believed it. Nathan would have never picked him if he had that resume. No, Nathan. Because need, Nathan, someone needed inferior, someone inferior yeah, to him. I would say that the film would have been better if, Na- during that whole exposition of, I've been manipulating you all along, Austin, it was me, Austin. That's Which a wrestling kind of, reference. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's that fact of, if he would have said, Yes, I chose you because you were a brilliant coder. I've been following your work for a long time. You got into the thing because of this and the other. I chose you way before you chose this company. Like, if Nathan would have said that, that would have made Caleb stronger right. as a character. But they didn't. They have this weird sort of thing of, well, Nathan's, like, like we all agree, Nathan is insecure. Caleb is insecure. Nathan is manipulative. Well, why did he choose Caleb? He's gullible. He, not <laughs> just because he's gullible, going back to what you said, yeah. Nathan's survival mechanism was to manipulate. Mm-hmm. Caleb's survival manipulation. Man- yeah. Mechanism? Caleb's <laughs> survival mechanism <laughs> was to hide, to hide, to be a chameleon. Right. Okay. If they would have hit on that more, if they would have hit on that aspect more, then he could say, I don't really like working in the company. I don't like having all of this prestige and everything like that. If they would have gone down that road, that would have made Caleb a better, a better foil mm-hmm. to but Nathan. I think they, this movie needed a victim other than Ava because, like, she really isn't. She's kind of a predator, and he's the reason. I guess the reason why they stayed with all this because I'm pretty sure they may have thought of this. Yeah. But then they're just like, no, we're gonna keep it this way. A because of the director, and yeah. B because they needed a victim that we could actually identify with, not somebody who's like artificially created or anything like that like we still feel sort of for Ava yeah we need somebody human to, to sort of act as a warning for us mm-hmm. and for us to be like oh damn dude you know damn well yeah, I think you know, yeah that's a good segue to start talking about Ava's character I think I think uh, Ava is the objective point of view of the movie she sees Nathan and Caleb she sees right through them. Yep. And she's very, she's very subtle on her her uh, manipulation of them both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that you know, she, she is she is such a strong character. She she's very very powerful. Um, she completely overwhelms completely overwhelms uh, Caleb. Yeah, completely. He's, 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 the first he, he is no match for her, and I think Nathan sees that. And when the in in the you know in the end when that, that scene happens, I don't think it took Nathan by surprise at all. I think he expected it. I don't. All, all, I think yeah. he boarded on one wanted it. I think he was so tormented that you know when it happened, he's just oh you know like I said fucking unreal. Like I didn't. I don't think he expected it to happen that soon, but I think he. Expected Here's why I, I agree with you and I disagree with you. Nathan was had all these post-it notes on the wall, and we yeah. never really saw what these post-it notes were. But what I noticed was that a majority of them were yellow, right? Some of them were blue, but quite a few of them were red. And for me, how I looked at that is I went, "Was it bad?" Well, like what bad Nathan was trying to figure out was, can this AI, because we're let's strip this down, can this AI pass the Turing test? Right. And if the answer is yes, you then have to ask the question, what's stopping this AI from wiping out the whole planet?